Now today we'll be talking about cooling fans. Now specifically on your late model vehicles, you tend to have two speeds built into these fans. There's a low speed and a high speed. And there's a way you can test both of those speeds. And if they're not turning on, we can test the motor itself, the fan motor. We can test the harness connectors. We can check the relays, which happen to live over there in this vehicle. So there's a couple different steps we can take. So if you have a problem with your vehicle overheating because the fans aren't turning on, this will give you a really good idea on the steps involved to pinpoint where the problem is. But right off the bat, what you can do is start the vehicle, start the air conditioning. Once you start the air conditioning, the low speed fan should turn on. In other words, these fans should kick on, but it's at the low speed setting. So let's first try that, and we can then move on to the next step. So once we turn on the air conditioner, these fans kicked on right away. But let's say you do this on your car and the fans don't kick on. What do you do? Well, let's go through the steps involved. Now, if you just perform that test and nothing happens, you turn on the air conditioning and the fans aren't kicking on, let's first check the power source going to the relay. In other words, if you take a look on every vehicle, you have a fan relay. And, and as you can see, you have number one, number two, and number three. In this case, we're just dealing with number one. Number one is your low speed. Relays two and three is your high speed, which we'll talk about later. So let's go ahead and remove this box. This is where, or the cover, I should say. This is where the relay lives. So right here is number one relay, and we need to remove it. So I'm going to grab a flathead, and very gently, as you can see, this car is 20 years old, so this is very wobbly. I really should tap a new... Uh, a new line in here, but that being said, just remove the relay. Be gentle. It can be a little, uh, a little cumbersome, but right here is a tab. We just want to gently pull it up, just like that, and there we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is turn on the ignition key and test for battery voltage. In other words, we want to verify that power is getting to this relay. If it isn't, the fans won't kick on. So to test that, you need a multimeter, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, if you've never used a multimeter, you can purchase one of these $20, $25 Sears, Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, your local auto parts store. They all have them. And the setting in this case, we need V, which is volts, DC, that's direct current, okay? So now we have the ignition key turned on, and I want to verify that 12 volts worth of power is getting to this harness where the relay lives. Now, if you don't know which harness to touch, just you can test every one, but essentially, you want to make sure that you're getting 12 volts worth of power. On this vehicle, the terminal's 3 and 1. So if I touch this guy and this guy, I should get 12 volts worth of power. And I'll give you a different shot in a moment. So your red lead goes directly, directly here, okay? Black goes to ground, which is any good metal point. And we, and we have 12 volts worth of power. Same with this guy right here. 12 volts worth of power. So this verifies that battery voltage is getting to this relay box or this harness connector. If we test the other guys, just to show you, no voltage, very, very small voltage. This is what you want to see, okay? 12 volts, 12 volts. Now, if you're not getting power, if you're not getting any power to the relay box, you have to find the short. Chances are it's going to be between the cooling fan relay and the battery. So somewhere the connection from here to here there's a there's a short and you gotta find that out. You gotta dig it up. But if this is turning out okay for you, the next step is checking ground. And let me show you on how you can do that. Now the next thing we're going to check is the harness connector for the cooling fan. So in this case we have two cooling fans. So we have two harness connectors. So just disconnect them. The other one is right over here. Okay. And right where my thumb is, just to show you if I did that too quickly, there's a tab, push down the tab, pull on the body, don't pull on the wire, pull on the body. So again, now we need the multimeter, and this is the symbol that you want. It looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot, that's for continuity. So we want to make sure that two points make a connection. And what we're doing here is testing the wiring on the harness connector. In other words, if there are any breaks anywhere in the wiring. So on this vehicle, if I touch number one, so there's four terminals here. If I touch number one, 
Now it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. If I touch number one, and then the other end of the multimeter, the other probe, goes all the way back. This is again where the relay lives. And if I touch terminal number five, we should have continuity. And we do. So that verifies that we don't have a break here. I'm going to do the exact same test also with, this is fan number one, we have to test fan number two. Same exact thing. Now obviously I can't show the multimeter and the, and the relay box, but again, one terminal goes here, the other one goes right to number five on the uh, relay box, and we have continuity. So that verifies that we don't have any breaks in the wiring for the coolant fans. Now if you're not getting continuity here, then you have to find the break, which is going to be between the relay to the harness connector. Somewhere from here to here, or from cooling fan number two, there's a break and you gotta find it. It's that simple. Now let's say that this test also works for you. Now the next, the next test is actually testing the relay itself. Now to test the relay, I have a separate video on that already. I'm just going to splice it in. Again, you need the multimeter. And then the last step, I'll come right back, is testing the fans itself, which will apply direct power right to the fans. Now we're going to test all three relays, but this is how you can quickly do this test really on any vehicle. If you take a look, there's a diagram on top of the relay. And all that this means is when number one and terminal number two is energized. So in other words, when it receives 12 volts worth of power, numbers three and five turn on. It's essentially a switch, a relay. That's all it is. So right now, there's no power being applied to this. So terminals three and five back here are not connecting, okay? When you apply power to number one and two, then three and five make a connection. Now, how do you test that? You can, sometimes you can try by listening if there's a click, but really the best way is to do a continuity test. So what you want to hear, something like this, okay? When we apply power. So the next question becomes, how do I apply power to terminals one and two? If you don't have anything, you can use your car battery. Now that's a little cumbersome. So what I'm going to use, I have an RC battery pack. This pushes out pretty close to 12 volts. So I'm just going to grab alligator clips, connect it to terminals one and two, and we'll see if we have continuity. If you're getting a little confused, let me hook everything up and I'll show you on how simple it is to test one of these. And you can really do this type of relay test on any component on your vehicle. So you want to test AC relays, if you want to test, grab this other one, uh, the cooling fan relays that we have here, starter relays, uh, relays for, actually you can hear it click, hold on. You hear that? Now that's not always a sure sign that this is working correctly. So I'll keep the power there, and now, let me just get this cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so now we want to see if we have continuity. So just take the leads, terminals three and five, and we should hear an audible alert. And there you go. Oh, you get a good connection. There we go. So that verifies that we have continuity. This is working correctly. Now if you perform the relay test and the relay is working, the last step is testing the fan motor itself. And to do that, you just apply direct power directly to the fan. So this is the wiring going directly to the fan. This is the other wiring. Make sure you guys can see that right here. Yep. For the fan number two. So what we're going to use or do is apply 12 volts worth of power directly to this connector. Now you can use the car battery, or in my case, I'm going to use a, uh, where is it? Here we go. A light bulb battery pack. This isn't for an RC car, and it pushes out roughly 12 volts worth of power, but all that you want to do is essentially get power from a 12 volt source directly to the fan. So apply power. So I'm just connecting essentially the battery to this connector, to the motor. That's it, that's all we're doing here. Now once I connect the negative terminal here, the fan should spin. So here we go.
So here we go. So there you go, the fan is working. And we'll do the exact same test with this guy. And there you go. So these are the steps that you need to go through to pinpoint where the problem is. Check the relay, check the wiring, check the motor itself. So this is for the low speed. We'll do the exact thing, a very, very similar thing to test for high speed. Now to test for the high speed function on the coolant fans, there really are two ways you can do it. Option one is you find the coolant temperature sensor. So that's right here in this vehicle. You can always tell because right here is the upper radiator hose. That's where the coolant flows through. So right there is the sensor. You disconnect the harness connector and you attach a 150 ohms connector to the harness connector. So you disconnect it, apply 150 ohms worth of resistance to the connector, start the vehicle and that will kick the high speed function on the fans. Now I specifically purchased these 150 ohm capacitors to do this test and I can't find them. I have no idea where they went. I just can't dig them up right now. But there is another option in how to make this work. So coming back to the wiring, this runs directly to the fan motor. We just did the test on how to test for the low speed when we applied 12 volts worth of power using the battery. Okay, we just did this test. But when we did the test, we essentially touched one top terminal and one bottom terminal. Now to do the high speed, we're going to touch both top terminals and touch both bottom terminals. So again, I have to the top terminal, I have the positive, positive going to the top, negative going to the bottom, okay? Hopefully I don't blow anything up and here we go. Here we go, here goes nothing. And that's certainly faster. So that verifies that the high speed is working here. Let me disconnect this. Okay, so I'm not sure if you were able to pick that up, but the high speed is certainly working on this fan motor. But let's say you want to backtrack. You want to see if the relays are fine. You want to make sure, make sure that the wiring is in good shape. Let's go through the steps. It's extremely similar to when we tested the low speed. So just like we did with the low speed, relay. We want to test the relays as well as the connections going to the relays. So I'm going to remove both high-speed relays and let's see that the wiring and verify that everything is in good shape. So now we're going to do the exact same test that we did with the low-speed relay. So here we have the two high-speed relay inputs. The ignition key is turned on. Positive goes to this guy. Negative goes to ground and we should see 12 volts worth of voltage. Let me just get my hand out of the way so you guys can see this. Hold on. Okay, 12 volts. The other one we need to check is number three. Okay, 12 volts. Again, if you're not sure, you can touch different terminals, but as you see, we have essentially no reading or very, very low reading. But this is what you want to see. 12 volts, 12 volts. Same with the other guy. Terminal 1, 12 volts, terminal 3, 12 volts. Okay, so that verifies that power is getting to the relay box. Again, if you don't see anything here, you have a short between the box and the battery. So now we need to test for continuity. Continuity is two points making a connection. That's the Wi-Fi symbol on the multimeter. So if you remember on the cover of the uh, relay box, it says radiator fan number two, radiator fan number three. So number two is referring to this fan right here. This is the driver side fan. Number three relay is referring to the passenger side fan. Okay, so two fans, driver side, passenger side. So we're first, we're first going to test continuity for, get my wiring here, for the driver side fan. So one terminal goes to number two, that's the upper right hand quadrant. The other one goes to number five, and we have continuity. Same with terminal number three, that's the bottom left. Go ahead and touch number six on the relay box. Oop, that's right here, and there you go, we have continuity. So this verifies we don't have any problem with the wiring. If you're not getting continuity, then you have a break between here and the relay box. Now let's test the exact same thing for the passenger side fan, but again now for the passenger side fan 
we're testing this section of the relay box. Okay, we have continuity again to number three and then to number six on the box and we have continuity okay now let me just change the camera now the next step is actually testing the relays itself again I have a separate video on how to test these I'll just splice that in right now and we'll come right back so here we have the high speed the high speed relays and same exact thing if you apply power to terminals one and two one and two just look for this symbol if you apply power then terminals five and three make a connection and seven and six both of them do same with this five and three seven and six so here we go apply direct power let's see if it clicks which it does but let's test it beyond that okay grab our multimeter here we go okay so that makes the connection let me zoom in here just okay let me do that again so numbers three and five okay that's good and number six and seven okay that's working good same with this apply power to terminals one and two let me get this out of the way okay sorry about that so again we're just applying power again this is clicking let me just make sure you guys can hear this okay and same exact thing number three and five okay six and seven that's it that's all it takes to test your cooling fan relays now if you test the relays and they're in good shape the last step is testing the fan motor which we've already done and we know that the fan motor is in good shape so if the fans aren't working these are the steps you have to go through again chances are if you're having problem with the fan it's coming down to the relay or most likely the fan motor itself it's sort of rare in a sense that these newer cars have a break somewhere unless it's just been sitting so long and you have gnats and insects and mice and birds just chewing at it at the harness connectors uh, but that being said these are the steps you need to do so i hope this helps someone out there if you like this please thumbs up subscribe and we'll see you next time.